Hello everybody, happy Friday. Happy Friday, happy Friday. It is fun Friday today and I'm so excited to be coming to you today live from the Soul Palette Studios. I'm doing a live out here where it is nice and quiet and I love this beautiful environment. Bear with me, we're going to be talking about some cool stuff today. I'm very excited about it. And I'm going to go ahead and start inviting some people to join us. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, everybody. I'm glad that you're here. I'm so glad that you are here joining me tonight. Christy, April, Melanie, Jennifer, Myra. I'm so happy that you guys are here tonight and I look forward to hearing from you. Let's see, what do we got going on? So I'm inviting everybody to join us. Please share this video so we can, this live podcast, we're going to be talking about consciousness, angels, and spirit. So we want you to go ahead and share this video. We're going to be doing some free readings tonight. I'm pretty sure we're going to let spirit come through and do some free readings with us. That's going to be exciting stuff. Very exciting stuff. Let's see who is here tonight. Comments will appear. Say hello so I know who's here with me. I'm going to light some candles. We're going to be sitting in a new location tonight. Hi, Amy. We're going to be sitting in a... I think I'm going to try sitting over here for a little while. And we're going to see how that works out and what that looks like. I have so many different spaces to sit in the studio. I'm not sure which one I want to sit in, but I'm going to try this one. Hi, Blynn. All right, we're going to see if I like this one here, and we're going to get our, our lighter to light our candles. We're going to be doing some beautiful angel readings and also doing some talk about consciousness. What is consciousness? We're going to use this. Oh, thank you. Let's see. We're going to try to put me by the sacred earth mother. We're going to see how our earth mother likes that. I'm going to try sitting over here. Oh, this is nice. This is kind of nice. It's different, but I love this table. I set this table up. Look at that. This is my almost like I kind of look like a fortune teller with this tablecloth set up there. See there? I made this beautiful area so I can have a romantic dinner or a quiet evening alone. Hello, everybody. My name is Sunshine Frost. I'm a psychic medium and a Christian, whoopsie, a Christian clairvoyant. And we're going to be doing readings from spirit as well as having a spiritual discussion tonight. This is called the Angel Hour. So I'm so happy. This is one of my paintings here. This is called the Tribal Mother or the Earth Mother. And she gives to us. And so we, I love these paintings. They're all over the studio. Give me just a second. I'm going to grab my drink. I'm going to light some candles. Man, I might even get the sage out tonight. I am feeling absolutely great on this fun Friday. Hi, Kelly. Hi, Marta. Hello, Miss Sue. Hi, Jeanette. Hello, Annette. Goodness, I'm so glad you guys are with me. I'm going to have Miss Amy talk to you guys about her reading that we did. I think it was today. We did a reading for her today. And I'm going to have her share that with you while I'm getting everything prepped to have this amazing angel hour. And I want you to share this with someone right now so they can join in because they may get a free reading. So I'm going to let you look at the Earth Mother while I set the rest of our stuff up.
All right, let's see. Where is the sage? Sage, sage, she's a sage. Oh, chocolate chips, that looks good. Where's some incense? If I don't have my sage, let's have some incense. Let's see. Yay, there's some. Yay. Oh, that actually smells pretty good. Let's see. Oh, that's nice too. Look at these. Oh my goodness, I have so much beautiful stuff. You guys, stay with me, don't leave me. Just because I'm not in the frame, I am doing some amazing stuff right now. I wanna talk about so many things tonight that I am actually getting out things that I usually use in the studio for live reading. So live readings in the studio can vary from $120 all the way up to almost $200. And I decided to take my hoodie off and let my hair down. It's a Friday night and we're gonna enjoy this. So if you don't know who I am, my name is Sunshine Frost. I'm a Christian clairvoyant. And I am going to be talking about spirit. And I'm going to be talking about angels. And I'm going to be talking about consciousness. We're going to be lighting some incense today. We're going to do a candle too. But I want to light incense to raise the consciousness that of everybody that is watching. And I want you to go ahead and share this video with one other person. Just one other person. So we can get started. I want to get started when we're around 26 20 people so we're wanting to get four more to five more what is going on with these bangs goodness that's what happens when you wear a mask and a hoodie all day your hair turns into that you know what i'm okay with it you are not the body and you are not the hair you are the that is inside the body that's what consciousness is it's recognizing that you are the it that is inside of the body you are not the body you are not the looks you're not the job or your money Look at this incense. Mmm. Oh, that is just beautiful. And I did this wooden box. Every time I did a reading, I would go over and light the incense. And, you know, these sticks burn for like 40 minutes directly. So I knew when the reading was about to end. And they'd always say, oh, you end it right on time. It's because of the incense. When I saw the smoke start to wave away, I would be ready to let go. We're going to light also our candles which is for cosmic connection, you know, to source, to creator. So for the body, the mind, and the spirit. I love these triple wick candles. They, I got this for my birthday and I love this triple wick candle. I feel like it sets exactly the mood that I wanna have when I'm thinking about consciousness and connecting my mind, body, and spirit. It's just so good to put that out there. And I love this box. Look at how that just comes through there. I don't know if you guys can see this on camera. If you can see this. Hi, Trudy. Oh, my goodness. Everybody's here. Hi, hi, Mary. I'm so glad. Hi, Lindsay. Hi, Delpha. Miss Rhonda, Crystal. I can't breathe this in so much, so I'm going to move it, but I wanted to show you. Hi, everybody. Hi, Fong. I wanted to share with you guys, just like the smoke is rising through a closed box, it finds a way to escape. That's how we have to be. We have to find a way to make it work and ascend in our souls and in our bodies and in our minds. I'm going to put this over here. Now that we're lit, it, we're going to fill the studio with a beautiful smell, and we're going to be so happy. I'm going to grab an angel candle. And it's kind of cold in the studio tonight. I got it cranked up to 75, but it is definitely not 75 right now. All right. So we're sitting in front of this tribal mother. This is the painting that I did. And we have this beautiful table and our beautiful tablecloth. <sighs> I was able to do three amazing readings today. I'm super grateful for those. And I wanted to talk about them. I'm going to see if maybe I can lift you guys up a little higher. So we can do some angel readings. Here we go. This should work. I did another Zoom class today. It was absolutely out of this world. It was amazing. If you're suffering with anxiety or panic, what you really, really need is one of those really good Zoom classes because I tell you what, they are worth their weight in gold. That class was so much fun. 
And having those 12 other ladies in resume, sorry about that. I know Rhonda was in that class with me today. Miss Rhonda, you were there for the anxiety course. Wasn't that so much funny? Hi, Marianne. Hi, Carmen. I'm so glad it's Friday, Lindsay writes, because she's had a busy couple of days. You guys feel good to comment anytime you want. Oh, this hair. <laughs> Let's try to push it out of the way. There we go. I am Christian Clairvoyant, Sunshine Frost, and we're going to be talking about spirit, angels, how they try to contact you, and all sorts of other supernatural stuff tonight. And I'm excited to say a prayer and get started. So you guys feel free to comment. We always start with a prayer, so we're going to light our Sacred Heart of Jesus, which is all about the consciousness of compassion and love and understanding in the world. So let's go ahead and say that prayer right now for those that are suffering and those that are sick. Okay. Father God, we ask you to be with us this night. Everyone that's in the sound of my voice, Lord, we just ask that you will give us a new way to think, a new mind, a new heart. And new understanding, Lord, to raise our consciousness, to help us to accept all of the challenges you've prepared us for. And we ask for those that are suffering tonight that you would let them know that you are there. Relieve even now the oppression of physical symptoms, pain, suffering, and fevers. In Jesus' name, amen. If you guys feel that that prayer did not cover what you're going through, you're always welcome to comment. I'm going to write you down in my book. God already knows what you need before you ask. But it's so nice to know that your sister is listening. I am listening. So, And so are your other brothers and sisters that are watching this. So I do want you guys to share this video right now because someone you know could be getting a free angel reading right now tonight on this broadcast. Look at this tingly mess. Ouch. Okay. So I want you to go ahead and share this video. If you've had a reading and you really were shocked and amazed by what you saw God do in your reading by bringing your family, loved ones, or angels through, I would love for you to share that with us because it really helps for us to understand. Good evening, good evening. She said, I love incense. That incense is so spectacular. It is homemade and it's, um, there's two that I love, but that one is the feminine divine energy. And whereas the Bible doesn't necessarily talk about a feminine divine, I feel that there is balance in everything. So just like I believe in this mother energy spirit, I always feel that God created everything with the male and female, and that has to be true even in the divine realm. So I always try to honor the feminine side of women, um, those that have to work in the world and be stressed out. I always try to honor the feminine that are in women and this incense is the most beautiful um combination of like sandalwood which is a little bit masculine and there's like some cedar and there's these all these beautiful um essential oil fragrances of flowers and it's just really balanced i think it's so pretty hi leticia ambrose i don't know if i've seen you before hi christy hello everybody hi courtney i'm glad you're here tonight hi veronica I like this time frame. 7.30 is our normal time. We come on Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 7.30, and we usually go from 7 to 8.30. Oh, my goodness. Lindsay said she started her seeds today. I wish you guys could see my candles in the picture. Maybe I should back you up a little more. I really want you to see the candles. And I'm about to throw everything off the other side of my table. I need a bigger cam uh, camera, maybe, because I can never get the whole shot in that I'm looking to get in. But we have our three pillar candle, which is for consciousness, which is the body, the mind, and the soul. And it smells like balsam fir, and it smells like a Christmas tree with cranberries on it. It is most amazing smell. And we have the beautiful sacred heart of Jesus, which is all about learning compassion. Christ was not here to divide. He was here to unite. And you know what? His light and the way he lived his life is an example for all of us how to work with one another in compassion. So, so, Lindsay said she started her seeds. Oh, you did a great job painting. I love this painting. It's not perfect. I actually could do probably a little better, but there's something about it. I don't exactly know what I like so much about it. Maybe it's the tactileness of it. What do you guys think? It's not perfect. It wasn't meant to be perfect. I did this painting many years ago, like probably maybe what, 10 years ago? No, about seven. No, no it's been 10 now at least because I've been here for two. Yeah, I did this maybe 10 years ago, and I just really liked it. I liked the way it felt, and I liked how big the plants felt with it. 
All right. All right. Thank you. Talented. I've thought about doing, I want to do some art. I want to do some, not just regular paint night, but I'm a Reiki healer too. So I want to teach you how to infuse your painting with this beautiful address of colors and how we can actually strengthen our, our energetic body or the aura and how in doing that we can infuse the art with this love and these healing healing feelings. We put it in there and then every time we look at that painting, we're brought back to that sense of wholeness. So when we, we do the painting and then we do a meditation with it, while you're doing the painting, you're listening to this meditation, it actually reframes the brain that every time you see that, you think of how wholesome, healthy, and well you are inside and out. It's a great way to connect to your body. I call it spiritual art. Hi, Sarah. Your reading was truly divine. You know, I don't want to take any credit for any reading that's been done. It is not through me. It has never been through me. I did not get the gift. God gave it. It was a calling for me. And it took me how many years? 30 years? 20, 30 years to finally accept it. I think I, I turned at least, you know, 30 years. I kept turning the alarm off, even though I had those inclinations. And I I told people things all the time that would scare them, but <laughs> I didn't come into the calling full time until a few years back. So if you're feeling that, then just know that it's okay to take your time and let your skills and gifts go at the rate at which God finds them helpful and useful and healthy to you and those around you. Okay. Michelle is in Florida or Georgia. And she said, I just like to listen to you talk. I don't... <laughs> have anyone to hear from, but I love listening to you connect to others. I am really so grateful every day for the gifts that I get. I Hey, you know what? I'm so grateful for the gifts I have. And my brother, my super special brother, Mr. Medium Dennis Perez, who's a Claire audience and he's a Christian also, is here tonight. And I'm so grateful when he comes on. I just love him. And I just have such good things to say about him. And you know what? I want you to know that the painting... Like this is another painting I'm going to show you. This painting doesn't take a lot of skill. It's really about just the formation of colors. But we could even do a painting like this one. I actually love this painting. And it's not that it's any special type of painting. It's a little bit of pour art. Maybe some sponges we could use in here. Definitely some sponging and a little bit of pouring. But there's probably other techniques you can use without wasting a lot of paint. But even in these abstract paintings... When you infuse the painting with love and you put your Reiki energy, which is just self-healing energy into it, you're going to feel that every time you look at it. So I feel like rather than just doing a paint night where everybody does the same painting and maybe some turns out better and some turns out not as good, it would be a wonderful way for us to get together and center ourselves and also do something really fun. So I think I'm going to put together an event Maybe on a Saturday night. What do you think? Yeah. Yeah, my yeah, husband's yeah. in the studio. He's studying. He loves to be present. He doesn't always like to be on camera. But he is a grounder. So most empaths or psychics will have a ground. If all of them have a grounder, whether they know it or not. But, honey, take the incense far, far away. It's bothering me. It's right there. It's starting to get to me. But anyway, um, so most psychics have a grounder. And a grounder is somebody that helps. The I just dropped you guys right on your face. Did you see that? Yeah, I just smacked you guys on your face right on my fa fancy table. I was making sure you were awake. That's what you said. That's so true. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> I was wondering if you guys would like to do a spiritual art class and we could do it on a Saturday night. What I really love about, um, take that outside and open the door or something or the fan on. What I really, really like about the art is that when I was in uh, a group home, I had spent like two years as kind of an orphan. I was a ward of the state. And during that time, I would take cereal boxes and cut them, <laughs> take them from the uh, cafeteria. Just like the Bible that I stole. If you guys didn't watch my Mark of the Beast video, you'll know I stole the Bible. <laughs> but anyway, I took the cereal boxes and... Um, yeah, just for a second, though. I took the cereal boxes and I flipped them inside out. And what I did was I used the inside of a cardboard cereal box to paint on. And then I learned to paint on cloth. I learned to paint on T-shirts. 
I mean, there's nothing you can't paint on. You can do the painting on the side of your dresser or a dresser drawer, the front of it. There's nothing you can't paint. So you don't have to be limited to a canvas. You can use a piece of cardboard or an Amazon box. Girl, take that Amazon box, tape the edges of it with some tape, some black tape or some fancy duct tape, and you'll be amazed that you can make a nice painting out of it. So we're not stuck. Goddess energy, absolutely beautiful and magical, yes. The painting subject is so round and maternal. You know, that's our earth mother. She's so special. She's so special. You know, I'm a, I'm a believer in Father God, but I also believe in Mother Earth. And I'm what you call a metaphysical Christian because I apply both. Like the rest of us, I know that the earth isn't flat anymore. We figured out that the world is round. One time we didn't think that the uh, the earth revolved around the moon, but the moon, or we thought that the... Uh, Moon revolved around us and that the earth, you know, we thought everything was opposite that we found out it really is with science. And so just like we didn't know how to get to the moon, we didn't know that the moon was made of, you know, not cheese. We didn't know about these supernatural phenomenon that are really very scientific. And if you didn't get a chance to watch the angel hour the other night with my son, who's basically on his way to become an astrophysicist, it was quite amazing to have him. His intelligence and his scientific mind really helped me to marriage together the spiritual beliefs of a psychic medium and with a medical background. I have a degree in medicine, so I understand certain portions of it, but the way that he studies particulate matter, black holes, we have conversations about black matter, dark matter, black holes, um, just mass, velocity, the how spirits are in their realm as opposed to this realm alternate realities, interdimensional travel. There's just, our conversations are deep. True, honey? Yes, very much. And they're up, we're up to like 3 a.m. talking about whether the person in the mirror is actually us <laughs> or the reflection of another dimension of self. Or what's looking at you when you're not looking or, at you. Yeah, he, or what's looking at us when we're not looking at the mirror. Is something watching us when we're not looking at it? So is it like a window into our dimension? We don't know. It's an interesting. All right, so if you if you would like to have the paint class on a Saturday, please buzz in right now and write Saturday. If you'd like to have it on a Sunday during the day, then please buzz in right now and let me know also. Like right now, you can answer. So Irene says, you also mentioned that I have four babies. You didn't even know that I had two kids and two abortions. Yeah, well, they show up in your life path, sweetie, and it's about, it's about forgiveness. It really is. If you've struggled through an abortion or a miscarriage, I don't normally talk about these topics, but they're so important to women and they're an issue that every soul goes through. What happens if you have a miscarriage or an abortion? Did that child ever exist? Um, do they get a chance to come back or is it over for them? If you were young and you had an abortion or you were financially hard pressed or somebody gave you terrible advice like I had, and you go through that experience, it is so damaging to the soul on so many levels and it can make you feel lost. And if you don't get a chance to grieve, you may never be able to get over that feeling that you've left something behind or there's something missing. So I wanna encourage you and let you know that I in no way, I do not in any way recommend any of those experiences, but I do want you to know that God is fair and just and the cosmic intelligence chooses to allow that soul that did not receive a body to have an opportunity to stay with you in spirit or to come back to you. And so many women that have came to me, in fact, I'm going to tell you a story that just happened. You, you know who I'm talking about, don't you, honey? The girl? Are you paying attention? Yeah, no, I'm listening. I, I just said I was going to tell a story about pregnancy and... And how oh. children are in your birth path. Yeah. I don't so about um, eight months ago, I had a gal. It was more than that. Because we've already been in quarantine for two. I guess it was about eight months Yay. ago. I had a young young lady come to me for a reading. And she told me that. Okay, so we did a reading on her career path. And that was all in alignment. But I said to her, oh, your grandmother on the other side has this little sparkle baby. And she's like, what do you mean? And I said, there's a baby on the other side that's kind of sparkling around with your grandmother. So if you're not ready for children, be very careful. Be very careful. My exact words. So she left. I didn't hear from her again. And then about, it was like, what, six weeks later? Mm, two months? Yeah, two months. So two months later, she calls me in a panic. And I'm at the restaurant. And I go to the parking lot. And I call her back. And she's like, sunshine, I'm pregnant. I don't know what to do. And she's flipping out and panicking. And I said, honey, 
what do you mean? You don't know what to do. And she's like, I'm only 18. I'm not ready for this. I, I wasn't ready to have this. Um, do you think you can get on this so you can read the questions while I'm actually teaching? Because I can't read all these and respond. Okay, so Saturday, I'm going to finish this story. Saturday night. Beautiful. Hi, Lauren. Hi, everybody. I'm going to finish my story. I'm just seeing... Thank you so much, Crystal. I was trying to figure out what people said if they wanted to do the art on a Saturday. <laughs> Hi, Christy. Yes, amen. I understand that it stays with you. Yes. Okay. So we didn't get any answers to the paint night. When are we going to do our Reiki infused paint night? Maybe Saturday night I'll create the event and then we can just do a wine and sip with some music in the background and make it really fun. So. This gal came to me, this young lady, and she didn't want to have a baby, but she got pregnant. And the baby that was on the other side with her, I kind of knew he was a little boy. I had seen him with her grandmother. And um, I said to her, do you have children? And she says, no. And I said, um, okay, we'll just be very careful. Because, like, he's kind of on the other side waiting on you to get your stuff together. <laughs> Thank you for inviting Gypsy. I appreciate it. If anybody comes through right now. Please share with a friend. I think this is such a fun and interesting topic. And I love to have comments. And even when you disagree with me. You'll have to mute that, honey. So you're going to have to. He's sitting about 10 feet away with my own feed going. And there's a delay from the time I talk to the time he says something. Okay. So if you see a question in there, I want you to refer the question back to me. Okay. Okay, Martin Christensen, that's my husband. Now he's watching. So he's going to help us the way Miss Beautiful Bonnie helps Mr. Dennis to do his readings. And he does beautiful, um, I don't know, he doesn't have a light label, but he's, it's uh, Dennis Pierce live. And he comes on live. So anyway, this young lady came to me, called me back and said she was pregnant. And I said, I understand that. And it's okay. I said, panic is normal. You are young, but I'm sure you have the skills. And the things I asked her were... Do your parents support you? Remember that? I'm talking to you, honey. Sorry, I was phased out trying to get locked in. <laughs> I said I asked her if her parents supported her. No. Yes, they did. I asked her if her parents supported her, and she said yes. Oh. Do you remember any of this? I'm not including him. He is off on every question. Okay, so what I was saying is, I said, do your parents support you? And she said, yes, my mother is very happy. My father's behind me. And what had ended up happening was, a few weeks later, I told her, look, there's churches that will help you. There's all these people that will help you. I'll get you in touch with anybody that you need. But she chose, ultimately, that an abortion would be a best situation for her at the time. I didn't see her again for about four more weeks. And then she came in for a reading and she said, I'm so, so sad. I'm in this depression. I can't figure out why. I don't know why I'm depressed. I don't have any physical reason to be depressed. And I explained to her that, I know it's funny. I explained to her that um, the baby was on the other side. So he was already destined to come to her. And because she chose not to have him the time that she did, um, she needed to forgive herself and she needed to accept that her body had a pregnancy that was just, you know, cut off. It was gone. It was over. But I wanted her to know that that little boy's spirit was still with her. He still has so much love and compassion. He still loves her as his mother. And he stayed with her. He was around her the whole time she was doing the reading. He came through. And she's like, how can he come through when he wasn't born? And I said, because he was conceived. So we were all a soul created in heaven before the earth. So before the earth age, our souls were created and we came through. So when people have abortion or miscarriage, the child usually gets the opportunity to come back in a physical body. So sometimes a soul will be reborn to the same mother. If you say have a mother that has like a placenta previa or um, a tilted uterus or some situation like polycystic ovarian syndrome where they get pregnant, but they oftentimes can't carry their child to full-term birth, that same child may return and try to be born to the same mother, but they have the choice. God is a fair and honest God, and he gives us the choice to do that. So I just want you to know that. Yeah, sparkle babies, I see them. Uh, I call them sparkle babies because to me, they are almost like a sparkle in my peripheral vision when I'm doing a reading. So I used to read with my eyes open, and I saw 
uh, all kinds of things. So now I, I read I read mostly with my eyes closed for what, like a year? Yeah. Because I didn't want to see anything and I didn't want to see the other person's reaction either. So when you're a psychic medium, you don't always want to see the reaction of the other person because if they started sobbing, then I would be like, okay, I need to back off. But at the same time, I want to give accurate accurate messages from the Holy Spirit that they do need to hear. And sometimes the messages are not the easiest thing to hear. True? Mm -hmm. You've seen people react in uh, different uh, situations. Oh, yeah. um, they'll say, I want to connect to my mom. And then mom comes through and they're sobbing and like, how did she treat me that way? How could she, how could she be in heaven? She was a hell, she was straight from hell when she was on earth, you know? Or I'll connect them to their mom and they'll say like, I came to see my dad. I didn't really like my mom that much. So yeah, there's all kinds of reactions. If you guys are just joining me, I'm going to repeat it again. For those that don't know, my name is Sunshine Frost and I am a Christian clairvoyant and a psychic medium. And we're talking about all kinds of spirit and angelic creations in the angel hour. We do this three times a week and sometimes more. And it's a chance for you to come bring your questions about spirit. Sometimes I give free readings right online that are live and it's just a great time to share questions and I'm talking right now about a woman that I did a reading for, a young lady that was 18 years old. I gave her a reading and I saw a sparkle baby on the other side, which was a spirit that was waiting to ascend and come into the physical realm. And it was with her grandmother and her grandmother was a Creole woman. And I knew her accent right away because I'm from Georgia and very familiar with Louisiana culture. And I absolutely loved her accent and... I said, your grandmother's Creole. And she was like, yes, she is. And I said, oh, my goodness. And I said, do you have any children? And she said, no. And I said, well, you've got one on the other side. You've never been pregnant. And she said, no. So usually when I ask the lady, for instance, I would love to do a live with you, Mr. Dennis. You would just speak to my heart, honey. I'm so glad that we found each other. And I would love to do one with you. Absolutely. So back to this, I just did a reading for a lady and she said that four babies came through. I'm going back up. I want to get your, I know, that's what I thought. I always call her Israel and I love that name. Her name is Irene Rael, but to me it's just Israel, which is so happy. Um, it says that she had four babies in her chart when it came through to me, her life chart, and that you didn't even know I had two kids and two abortions, but... I do know only because the spirit shows it to me and they want you to know that that even if you do not have your baby in birth, there's so many times when a child can't come to you or passes away, you will have a chance to have that motherly experience with them on the other side. So sometimes a baby will come back to you and sometimes, for instance, I had gotten pregnant. Can you close that door? Some giant galley whopper fly thing just came over and tried to carry me off mosquito hawk. yeah mosquito hawk or whatever we call them gallow flies back in georgia he says possum on a gun bush <laughs> he always makes fun of me he always makes fun of me when i get tired i get the dang old man just give me out coffee man i sound like boom hour that's what he says but anyway um so i got pregnant um, and was, was very excited and ended up having a miscarriage like 13 weeks in. So it happens. I didn't think I was going to have any more babies. And then three months to the day, I ended up getting pregnant again. That child came through no problem at all. I was on heart medicine and they had determined that my heart medicine came through the placenta and actually lowered the blood pressure and heart rate of the baby so much that he couldn't survive and he ended up just passing and that's the way it worked. So I kind of knew the reason. When I got pregnant the second time unexpectedly, I went off the medicine against all medical advice, to be honest. And for that whole nine months, I never had a single SVT episode, true? True. And that has not happened to me since I was like 19. So for the whole nine months I was pregnant, my heart, my SVT, my arrhythmias stopped. And the whole nine months, I did not have any arrhythmias. And then he was born and like, I nursed him for about 10 weeks or six weeks. And as soon as I got, you know, six weeks, I had to go back on the medicine to control the SVT 
But I truly believe that the same baby that came to me the first time was the same one that was so determined to be born. And even though at the time I'm like, man, I don't need any more kids. What am I thinking? I have a kid that's... David was what, graduating high school or something? Mm -hmm. 15 years apart. Yeah, they're yeah. 15 years apart. I was like, I don't need it. I don't need to do this again. Um, I'm so grateful and blessed that I gave him a chance to be in my life and he just turned six and he's the joy of my life. So Oh good. All right. I'm glad. Sparkle babies. So when I see babies on the other side, I see them as sparkling. And it means sort of like they're just like if you've ever been driving in the rain and you look at a street light and you squint your eyes, that kind of sparkly outline, that's the way they appear to me. Whereas a person that has had a physical body, um, so sparkle babies only come when they've passed in utero or like without a body or without, they might have died at birth. Like my brother, he was strangled with his cord. He is, he's a sparkle baby, but I don't feel him that way. I feel his presence differently, but he doesn't come through in a physical format because they don't really have the ego of their body, if that makes sense. Michelle's asking what are your thoughts on, thoughts and feelings on Pat White. Okay, so my thoughts and feelings, I'm going to get into that. Save that question and remind me, okay? Mm -hmm. So sparkle babies are those, see... Your grandfather wouldn't appear to you as a sparkle. He'd appear to you in the way that you most knew him because it would damage your ego to see him any other way. So it's important for us that we see our loved ones the way we see them. And even with us, when a person detaches from the body, they still see their spirit body as the same as the physical in the beginning because their ego will not let them see anything else. So with a sparkle baby, it's a child that either hasn't been born or was aborted or miscarried or didn't have an opportunity to receive a physical body for the first say year of life. So when I see a sparkle baby, I will always ask them because your soul number doesn't change. If you've had six children, I've had clients and I've said, you have six kids? And they're like, no, but I had six pregnancies. And I'll say, okay, you have three alive? And they'll say yes. So that's how that works. Okay. What are my thoughts and feelings on past lives? That's like a whole episode, Michelle. Can I just can I just cover that in one thing? It took monks and Buddha and Gandhi and everybody a thousand years. What's that? What? My eyes are open. What are you trying to say to me? Oh, I'm squinting. I'm squinting. I got my glasses on. Okay. I'm trying not to squint. Anyway, it took Buddha and Gandhi and all, every monk I've ever met and all the Tibetans, you know, thousands of years to come up with a good script on past lives. And I'm going to tell you what I think in a short verse without, what are you laughing? Because I don't want to get into this in one whole episode, but I am going to tell you what I think. Do I think that there has been past lives? First of all, as a Christian, I know we had a previous life because we were created before the earth age, which means we watched all this happen. We watched the angels were created before us. There's nine realms of angels. Then we were created, but we watched the angel war in heaven and we saw them fall to earth because we were there when it was created. So we all lived in a pre-existent world where we understood what sin was, but we didn't have the opportunity because we were in a perfected state. So when you feel that you've known somebody before, you really have known them before. And when you see people very, very talented, all right, so we got You got to start speaking up because, like here, it says Miss Charlene would love a reading for her daughter. Would love a reading if possible. Mine keeps, oh, okay. Mine keeps locking up. I would let you finish before I. Okay, good. But um, so we all were created in a past life, and then we've also been watching a turn. So we've been watching the Earth Age. This Earth Age started after the flood. So we had a first Earth Age. <laughs> yeah, we had a first Earth Age, which was like a prehistoric Earth Age. We had our Earth Age that ended with the Flood, which was there with the Nephilim, and then we're in a third Earth Age now. We're in our last Earth Age before the New Earth. So in that, there have always been past lives, because we didn't just get created when we were born to our mortal parents. But if you've ever had the feeling like you've been to a place before, I have that all the time. I get deja vu all the time. I feel like I've been places, I think I died in the Titanic. I mean, if you want to... He knows that, true? Mm -hmm. I feel like I was on the Titanic when it went down, and I've had nightmares about that my whole life. I've had that fear of being underwater. I, 
I watched the movie and had panic attacks. I even drove all the way to Florida to see the arc, the uh, what is it, artifacts, mm -hmm. and had a panic attack going in. And then I went to a 3D theater to try to watch it, and I was just sobbing. Like I had <laughs> felt like, why are you laughing at this? What is so funny? Hey. It's just 100% true. I feel like I've been there. Like, I feel like I was on the Titanic when it went down, okay? So if anybody went down on the Titanic, we probably do know each other. I think maybe Atlantis existed, because I feel like I was a telepath long before I came to this Earth. I feel like all of that is true. I, I, unicorns, yeah, probably, because they're in the Bible as well. So are dinosaurs, the Leviathan. Oh, I think she was on the Titanic. Well, that's probably why we're like that, Rhonda. We're like that, this, mm, like this, and like that, and we're in the bubble of quarantine together. So I get it. But what I want you to focus on as a Christian, like how can I say that and believe in God, who I love? Mwah. Because we only live one life at a time. And in this life, this beautiful life, I choose to be a believer in the one and only true God and his son, Jesus Christ. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't truly matter because I only live one life at a time. So no matter if I was the queen of Egypt or Sheba or I did sink the Titanic, it wouldn't too much matter because I'm only living in this life right now. And in this life, he showed me the way to live. And that's what I'm trying to do. So does that answer your question? I don't know. Maybe it poses more question than answers, but that's how I choose to look at it. In this life, I chose to serve Jesus Christ, and I'm going to do my best to be doing that to the best of my ability. Hi, Barbara. Hi, Josh. Hi, Josh. You was in the Titanic? I don't know. Were you there with me? I was the one singing, I'm the king of the world. <laughs> I was on the front of it. Um, no, it really did scare me, and I've always thought that, and I've always drawn ships ever since I was really, really young. So, some of that's very, very truthful. What's wrong? I'm out? I'm booted. You got booted? Do you guys get booted out of this live? Do you guys get booted out of the live all the time? Please share this. This is a funny one tonight. I can't even believe this. This is crazy funny. <laughs> I didn't, yeah, I didn't know I was going to talk about all this stuff. Okay. Feathers. Amen to Jesus Christ. Yes, thank you. If God is just and fair, then Christ is the literal expression of God's love for us. So if you look at him as like God is the judge, he is the judge and Christ is, he is like the actual literal and physical manifestation of all perfect love. So if you look at Christ, a lot of people will use him to divide others. When they say, well, Christ said this and Christ said that, actually... Christ did not say any condemning words to anybody but the religious zealots of his time. When they brought him a prostitute, when they brought him an adulterer, when they brought him a, a leper, an alcoholic, someone that was paralytic with demons, someone that was a tax collector, and unclean people of every kind and every sort... He loved them and he gave them compassion and he healed them and he did not deliberate between who was better from one to the other. And he said, I have no need to hear the words of their mouth because I see the condition of their heart. So let us be reminded it's the condition of our hearts that let us worship him in truth and spirit. So it's not about your job, your church, where you sing, how you sing, what you call God. It's just about that you call on him. So let that be a lesson. Right? Okay, so that was my preaching for the night. You guys had to listen to it. All right, Amy says she's never been booted out. Okay, so here we go. Miss Sandy D. We're going to go back. I wanted to see what... Um... Okay. I'm going to ask Barbara. Remind me, Barbara's got a question, okay? Yeah, I'm trying to get out back in. So. I used to, but not this. Crystal said I used to, but not this. Okay, so Crystal, you know I'm blonde, sweetheart. It's so obvious. Let's do me a favor and help me out. Um, this is like trying to have a conversation with 20 people at the same time. Answer the question and the answer because I can't keep up. I can't keep up even with what I'm saying. So Sandy says, I dream of going to a thrift store in Paris that I own. I know the shop owners around my store. Every time I have the dream, it is the exact same layout, etc. I have this dream repeatedly 
And in my dream, I have a feeling of going back home. By the way, in this life, I have not been to Paris. How do you know that? How do you know you haven't? See, the thing is, there is a thing called astral travel, and it's very, very real. I used to do it as a child, and I thought it was a game. It wasn't until I started figuring out that I was actually seeing real things that were happening in real time. Remember the Jennifer, uh, remember Christy Minx? I told you about her. Me and BJ saw her body and everything, and she was a friend of mine that was killed when I was a child. And I remember flying... <laughs> Uh, I think this is why they say witches and stuff fly because there was paranormal phenomenon associated with psychics and things at that time. It wasn't always that way, believe it or not. But um, <clears throat> it wasn't always that everybody that had paranormal gifts, and they weren't called paranormal. They were called super special spiritual gifts. And most of us were from the tribe of Levi, which was the priests. And we would actually wear breastplates now, not saying the females, but we, as in our bloodline, would wear breastplates with 12 stones for the 12 tribes. And those metals, along with those crystals, would help us with our, with our intuition. And we would know things to be able to dream and interpret dreams and also to know when armies are attacking and when to retreat. So God's people have always been an intuitive people. That's why there's so many dreams in the Bible. And in dreams, they would actually travel and see things they could not have seen like an imaginary finger writing on a wall. 200 people saw that. That would be called like supernatural, uh, you know, ghost hunting now, but it wasn't then. It was just very normal to have God's visitation in people's life and for him to give the gifts of the spirit freely. So there were times when people could travel in their mind in an astral state, right? The astral plane. And they could see things that they couldn't see in their regular everyday waking life. Well, then in the 1600s, when the witch trials and all that happened, they found that these women that had the ancient knowledge of herbs and things like that, they began to condemn everybody, not just those that practice witchcraft, but those with spiritual gifts as well. So a lot of them got an unfair rap and ended up being burned. Even cows were burned, weren't they? Like for eating tomatoes was a sin. And if you said bless you, that meant you were being attacked. And they went pretty crazy with all of that. But um, astral travel is a real thing, and a lot of light workers will travel in their sleep to other places around the globe. So sometimes could it be a past life? Yes. Could it also be that you're traveling during your sleep? Yes. Both are possible. Because your consciousness is not awake when you're sleeping. It's the only time your consciousness is not being engaged, okay? It's engaged at another level. All right. Next question. Irene said she had some vivid dreams about swimming in the ocean with whales and many other sea animals. It was the greatest loving dream she ever had. Irene said that? Mm -hmm. You know, <laughs> I've often thought about this because in the perfected state and even in spiritual state, when we're not in the state of the body, we're not held by the physical properties of the first, first earth, which is or the third earth, which is what we're in. The lowest dimension of earth's creation we're in that right now so we are pulled down by gravity on a molten uh, metal core of the earth and then we're held down by the atmospheric gravity but in other realms we don't have that we don't have those laws of physics the way the particles and mass and matter behave in this dimension and i've asked you that question before if i'm in spirit can i go in the ocean and swim because i don't need to breathe air mm -hmm. didn't i say that to you before I was like, could I swim with them? Could I go in the ocean? Could I do all of these things? Could I walk right through the oceans and right up to land and just walk all over the planet? And in the perfected earth age, will I have to have air? <laughs> you know, will I have to have that? Patty said she had a friend that used to meet in their dreams in college. Yes, yes, yes. That has happened to me a lot of times. I can't tell you the number of times, but it hasn't happened since I've been an adult. It happened only when I was a teenager. And Sandy it, says she votes on... Uh, a session devoted to dreams. A session to, yes, I can do that. I can definitely do a session on past lives and dreams. I just, there's not a lot of people teaching it from the perspective of a metaphysical Christian. So I want to incorporate both. There's so many teachers and I advise you to find the one that resonates with your soul body. But if you were led here or drawn here, there's a reason. And it's not me. It's the spirit and light that is within me, which I want to acknowledge comes straight from Father God and the cosmic universe and the cosmic divine feminine, which I love. Doc's here. Who's here? Doc. Doc. Jack. Jack, hi. 
Okay, so Barbara says, you were talking about previous lives. My daughter was regressed by her aunts years ago, and she has a recollection and a memory because she woke up crying from the regression. And she told... Okay, give me a second. Yep, Michelle agrees. She wants a session on past life and dreams. Okay, I can do that. Let's schedule that. So I'm beginning to... Let me finish this real quick. So she says that they've always been reconnected as soulmate and she believes her husband now. Yeah, they've been. Yes. Yes. Me and Marty thought the same and we were told the same more than once that we've been in past lives together. I guess so it is possible as you're talking about a previous past lot lives that someone can go back and be regressed again to kind of help that wound that was open and the kind of the portal of the memory can be healed. Yes, I do. What do you consider bad? It's not too right here where we are, but yes, we do have it. Okay, so I, maybe I didn't get Josh's comment. Can you check Josh's comment? Because I'm not sure what to make of that. Hi, Miss Debbie. Hi, Miss Patty. I'm Sunshine Frost. I'm a Christian clairvoyant, and we're talking about spirit, angels, dreams, and we're laughing about all of it. <laughs> we're not taking ourselves too seriously, you guys. We got to be serious, but not too serious. So, just like when you guys ask me questions during a reading, do I answer every question, Marty? No. Why? Because you can't. Can't. I can't. I'm trying to go back. I can't answer every question because spirit doesn't give me the answers to every question. Some things you do not need to know. When the pandemic first broke out, well, which is many, many months ago, I saw it coming to America around October. I knew it was active in November. I had my first premature dream in, I think it was like the first week of February. And I saw 50,000 lost. And that was in America. And they were like, the numbers weren't even close to that. And at the time, I was terrified. I woke up screaming, super upset, like just not screaming, but just, oh, we got to get up. We have to go to the store. And I made us go buy food and, and buy the stuff that I saw, the shortages and the lines out of the buildings. And I just saw crazy stuff. And I, it was just absolutely insane what I saw. And I was, I posted about it and a lot of people took it down and a lot of people got angry and a lot of people got mad and banned me and blocked me and even unfriended me, which was crazy. <laughs> but, uh. You know, now you see some of the other stuff that's going on. So it's not that hard to pick up that we've had past lives. Yeah, a lot of people do believe that. And I did have a young man. You know, I had a young man that lived next to me when I was about 12 years old. And he got arrested as a car, as a, for stealing a Mustang. His parents came and hauled him off. Cops hauled him off. And he had a Mustang in the backyard. And he'd either chopped parts of it or over something. But he was arrested. Well, there's a lot of dream stuff coming in right now. Okay. So anyway, in that he was arrested and I had, he was leaving and his mom and my grandmother were good friends. And I went over there to listen to their coffee date. And I said to her, she says, I just don't know why he steals car. And I said, because he used to steal horses. And she said, what did you say to me? And I said, yeah, he was a horse thief and he was hung. That's how he lost his eye. Well, in this life, he had a glass eye and I was only like, I think, I think I was like 10 or 11 and I actually told her that he had lost his eye when he, he was hung, but he lost his eye before that. And in this life, he was a car thief that only stole Mustang parts. That's what he would do. He would take a car and scalp all the parts off of it and sell the Mustang parts. And the funny thing was, that's what he was in a past life. He was a horse thief and he only stole Mustangs. So he was continuing that pattern of bad behavior in this life as well. There's uh, a lot of flying. There's people flying in the Okay, do a I will. And what I'll do is I'm going to create... I'm not going to just do the angel hour as I've been doing them. I'm going to create it as an event. So it'll still come on same time, but you may have people you never had. And when you see the event, you can share it before. So they, they, they can't hear you. Come sit over here because they can't hear your voice. They want to hear you. I'm just reading your questions. He's just reading them, but he, you know what? Maybe I can get him over here on the next one. He's just repeating to me questions that I need to answer. Hi, Ryan. I just found the spot where I'm getting good internet. So. Okay, he just said he found good internet. He's not moving. <laughs> many lives, many masters, classic book. Yes, I've read a lot of a lot of material on past lives. And then she's uh, Stephanie saying previous lives is that the same as the acrostic records? Uh, yes and no. Yes, Ac yes and no. But there are past lives that are in an akashic records. But akashic records are more what your soul was programmed to do before it came here, and what information and training it already came with, and then how you're supposed to activate in those gifts. So I'm actually an activator, 
That's my goal. That's why I came to this planet is to activate others in their gifts and to be able to help them heal themselves and the world. So my goal is not really to just do readings. It's to activate others in their spiritual gifts. So everybody that's drawn to me was drawn here to activate in their own spiritual gifts and raise the vibration of the planet and help us heal. There's a lot of flyers. You guys are all flying. You've been flying here since. Thank you, Sandra. Sandra's very special though. And we have a good kindred thing. I would love to know how much a person can, okay. Take. How much a person can can take life? I'm not quite. Can you repose that question so I understand it, please, Miss Marie? I, I, I used to fly in my sleep when I was young. I used to be bummed when I woke up. Yes, I flew all the time, and <laughs> I didn't want to tell you this. This is kind of funny. I had this really um. So I think I watched the Get Along Gang, but I had this purple fat cat. It was like Heathcliff, Heathcliff, but it was purple and white. And I, in my dream, I knew that I couldn't fly and I would get afraid. As soon as I would start to get up above the house and get a little height, I would get afraid at seeing everything looking down. So in my dream, I would always, I wouldn't sit on a broomstick, so don't say that. Because I, I know that was, my husband, I knew that was coming. I, I did not, <laughs> I did not sit on a broomstick. I, um, I had this cat, this stuffed cat, and I would tape, I would put it to my belly, and I would tape it around us, and then we could take off and fly. And I always flew like I was sitting down. Like, I felt like I was sitting down. It could have been a broomstick, but it wasn't. <laughs> it was a cat. But, and it was funny that I flew with a cat on a broomstick. <laughs> but I'm not a witch. Um, I've been accused of that so many times, but no, I'm not a witch. Um, but yeah, I would fly and I could clearly remember seeing people, seeing things, seeing my grandparents, seeing conversations they were having, all of that. But there is a silvery cord that runs from the navel and it's in the astral, but it's, it's what ties the physical body to the spirit body. And actually, um, okay, so I'm, I'm reading these. <laughs> yeah, Israel, that means my sweet sister, uh, my sweet sister that I love. That's crazy. The Mustang thing. Yeah, I was really young. I was really young when I said that and they weren't happy. They sent me out. And she's like, how dare your granddaughter talk to me like this? And she was like, I'd listen to her if I were you. And uh, they didn't have much of a friendship after that. Kathy says she's so dissatisfied when I wake up during my travel dreams. I have dreams of flying too. They're so real. I know that feeling my best was over the coast. Yeah, coast surfing with dolphins. Ed used to have flying dreams as well. Sunshine, oh, thank you. I love my flying dreams. How can we work with you to realize our gifts? Okay, so I'm going to tell you that. I am starting Zoom classes, which I used to teach here in the studio up to 100 people at a time. I ran basically a school for the psychically gifted, empaths, mediums, and clairvoyance, clairaudience, whatever it was. And it's not that I teach you to have the gift. Mm -hmm. It's that teaching you how to use and help yourself to use the gift in the safe and healthiest way. And I also try to avoid a whole lot of occult influence. So I try to keep it spiritually based and fun. I'm very open to the consciousness, but not so open that I let everything in. So there you go. Jack says, I don't fly. I have a huge black curtain. Oh, okay. What does that mean? Just not right in this lifetime. All right, Marie, so are you saying that you feel that your life is out of sorts or that you're at a different time or you're at a different era? What is it? When you return from flying, is that when you were feeling like you were falling? Yes, when the sp yes, it can be. Yes. No, my arms were tired. Uh, what's that? No, but my arms were tired. Oh, yeah. Are you leaving me? I'm just for Okay. So, um... No, but there is something about Shakespeare. Shakespeare and people in his day, along with Aristotle and Socrates, talked about how precious the silver cord that binds the mortal coil. And if you break that down, they're talking about, this is our mortal coil, the coils on the outside, the mortalness, right? We're all made from nothing but earth elements. That's all we're made from, guys. As, as much as it seems that we're all different, we really are from the dust of the earth. We're made simply of elements of carbon, nothing else, same as every other life, organic life form on earth. And the only thing that separates us is our soul body, the soul body. And the soul body is not held in place except by the ego. And the ego is awake in the waking hours and it's asleep, mostly when we're asleep. That's why we're not self-conscious when we're sleeping. We're just doing it. Uh, we're just doing what we do. 
But especially as a child, we don't have an ego that's telling us, oh, you can't fly, you're stuck in this body. We don't have all those rules grounding us. So we're much more capable of possibility thinking as a child. So have you ever heard the thing that if you fall and hit the ground before you uh, wake up, you will die? Have you heard that? Let's hear from you guys. I want to hear what you have to say about that. Um, can the person that came through with the daughter that wanted the reading, can you come through right now, please? Can you tell me your name? Because who's struggling with the anxiety? Somebody's daughter is struggling with anxiety. This is a younger female. Um, quite a bit younger. Not, you know, I don't even think she has children. This is like under 25 and she's really struggling with anxiety and panic attack and she's had a lot of tough times and it feels like maybe even a uh, I don't want to say a breakup but it's almost like there might have been one I'm definitely feeling a young girl okay yes Mm, okay. Is anybody there? I can't see any comments. Oh, there we are. Yes, I've heard if you die in a dream, you will die in real life. You, your body won't let you. Has anybody ever actually died in a dream? Tell me the truth. Have you ever actually physically experienced the feeling, ouch, of dry, dying or, you know, all the way to the ground? Have you felt that? You go through with hitting the ground? Do you really? Oh my goodness, Irene, goodness gracious. If you've ever been, had some dreams that were so real, it's unbelievable. Correct, that's exactly what it is. Just like Dennis said, your body's only a temporary vessel for your soul to exist in, that's it. There's a silvery cord that ties us. Yes, yes. Sometimes dying in a dream can mean that we're letting go of an old habit or pattern, but I'll get into some dream interpretation in a different episode. But I just wanted to know if you'd ever had those dreams where they said, oh, you'll die if you die. No, just like Freddy Krueger. That, that's like, oh, okay, if you die in your sleep, you die in real life. No, that's just a horror. That's a horror notion. You know, normally it's a death to the self, it's a death to a part of the self, or if you've been through a divorce or something major where that part of your life is over and it can't be resurrected, you might have a dream of dying. I've had, uh, let's see, I wouldn't say, I don't think I've had a dream of dying. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's true. Amy said she hit the ground. <laughs> Chipsana says you're the divergent. Oh, <laughs> I love that. I'm so glad you guys are here with me. Go ahead. Yeah, that they both, Gypsum and Amy both said they hit the ground. They realized they were okay. Oh, they're going crazy. Can you guys hear Marty at all? I'll try and scoot over, but this thing's just barely keeping Why don't you um, sit right here on the other side of the table? Because you put your computer there, and we can sit on the table yeah. together. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to smell this candle again. I like candle huffing. It. It's so good. I put out two of the candles with the wax. Good grief. You huffer. I know, and that was so hot. It almost burned my nose here. I don't know what I was thinking. Oh, I need to do it at a distance next time. Don't let me do that again. Don't stick your face in the candle. Yeah, I... This is I'm, why I have a husband. He's like a handler for like a wild lion or something. All right. Oh, good lord. Good I know, they're going nuts. crazy. I, I said talk to me, and I meant it, and they went nuts. Gosh, my nose is burned. I smell like balsam fur all the way up to my brain stem. Ooh, okay, I have hit the ground. My daughter has serious anxiety, yes. Why are you saying not, sweetie? Amy, I believe this is your daughter. Yes, fell before and had something holding me down, but not after I became a Christian. Yeah, there's definitely um, warfare. My husband always tells me I was born in the wrong century. I feel, he feels connected to another time and generation like he's not meant to be in the here and now. You made that choice, guys. We all chose to be in these latter days. That's a true fact. We were all saints that were reserved, or saints, souls, whatever you want to call us. We were all saints before we came here because we were without the sin. And we didn't know really about that in this generation or dispensation. And so we were brought forth at this time. And it's not really a surprise. We actually knew we were going to go through these perilous times. So when you think that this is a big surprise, you chose it. 
Own it. You chose it. They can hear me now. Okay, good. In a dream state that I heard, there's there's the uh, moderator right there. Oh. Say hi. Oh. Hi. <laughs> he had like my little reading glasses on. He's like, don't show me. What are you doing? Don't, don't do that. In a dream state I heard that's supposed to be there's going to be a death. Um, not necessarily death of anything. It can be death of a, of a specific time of your life as well. It doesn't have to be like an actual physical death of a person. <laughs> yeah, Freddie well, and Jason scares everybody. Rhonda, are you falling off of curbs in <laughs> dreams? Or... Yeah, what are you doing? She what has... are you doing, Rhonda? <laughs> She's... <laughs> they said they can't hear you, so you got to scream. Ask really loudly. No, they can hear me now. Well, Stephanie can't. Oh, well, that was before. Oh, okay. So I jerk when I go to sleep every night. True? Oh, oh yes. All night long. <laughs> I'm in the ring with a prize fighter every night. No, I sit like a guy, and it's oh. really scary. I yeah. sleep like a man, and I, I think I was a man in my past life. So. She doesn't sleep like a man. She sleeps with her legs crossed like she's sitting at a table. It's super freaky. So I put my hands, um, I sleep normal until I go to sleep, and then I put my hands on my back like yeah. this, and then I put my feet all the way up and cross it. She crosses her legs like she's sitting at a chair. But like a dude, I don't cross it like ladylike. It's like that, where it's on a perfect angle, and, and the, the covers will be all. And like... then she throws the people's elbow. <laughs> but I always jerk when I fall asleep. I'll fall asleep, Damn. and then I always feel myself going uh, down a step, just like you, Rhonda. I feel myself going down a step, and I miss the step, and I just jerk, and then he knows I'm asleep. And I don't fall asleep until the jerk happens. And sometimes it's so much that it'll start to wake me up and I'll get startled and I have to fall back asleep. So it always happens that way. Can you talk about this time transitioning to a more enlightened time? Yeah, of course it is. We'll talk about that. Your dreams are given from God. I saw a dream. I saw the day Jesus came back and I asked Dennis if spirit could tell me what my dream was, and a few days later, Spirit told J Dennis my dream down to the guy in the green shirt yelling, it's not the rapture. Mm. That's awesome. And that's all Spirit is. It gives you what you need. Not all Spirit, but the Holy Spirit. That's what you want to ask for. You want to be asking that. And it's amazing and beautiful what all of God's gifts are and how he gifts us. Yes, in dreams, I step off curbs. I call them um, and missteps, and then you jerk and then awake. Yeah. I always do that, and they say that's a form of your consciousness moving down and out of your um, your ego brain and into your soul brain. So that's how that works. All right, there's a young girl that suffers with major anxiety. Um, this might be your daughter, uh, Amy. Like, has she been having panic attacks and has been really... I notice PTSD makes me jerk when falling asleep, but at the same time, I feel in a good state of sleep. Yes. That's the only time you go to sleep. Yeah, that's that's the only time I go to sleep. She jerks every time she goes to sleep. And every then I time. know she's asleep, and then I can go to sleep. Yeah, then I'm good. All right, Miss Amy, I feel like this is for your daughter. How old's your daughter? Could you please tell me? Because I feel like she's isolated, like she had to leave school. Is she in college or high school or something? I mean, I feel definitely student. Yes, massive panic attacks. Um, but this just kind of came on more suddenly. Like, I don't feel like it was at that level at all. And it's just gotten really intensely crazy. How many water signs do we have present? Can you please tell me? Okay, that's what I felt. 13. Yeah, I was thinking very young girl. Definitely panic attacks and separated from friends. And <sighs> there's even a boy that there was. Yeah, she left school and there was even a situation with a young man. And she's very isolated from everybody. And um, it's been very, very hard. And you've been doing your best to protect her. But um, who's got the early spring birthday? Me. Barbara does. Yay. Does. Yes. What are you guys? Do we have Cancers, Scorpios? <laughs> surrounded by Pisces? Well, you're surrounded by one more, sister. 
My husband's a Leo, and he's like, yeah, she's a fish. I know, Kathy. I feel... <laughs> Yes, there is. She's very isolated, and there is a young man, and I feel like there's even some like fear over the young man, and some because uh, she's not able to be with them, and there's a little bit of talking, but yet she's very isolated, and there's some other friend of hers. I feel like there was either a falling out or something happened. Okay, Miss Barbara, I love it. Water bearer. Yeah. <laughs> <He's>... <laughs> uh... Yeah, he's a Leo. How many fire signs do I have in the house? There you go. See, I knew they'd come forward. Leo's never have a problem. Come on, Leo. Come on. Way to go, Kara. Show us. Show us your uh, mane. Show us your war. Show us. Be with us. Marie, yes. Yeah, there's definitely an issue with a best friend, too. Um, yeah. Yeah, I know my cappies. I know, Miss Rhonda. You're my cappies. I'm, both my managers are Capricorns, by the way, so... Stephanie's a Libra. My daughter's a Libra. Yeah, there's definitely something going on with the boy and with her, but it's like she's her heart. sleep is very interrupted right now. Dennis she's... is saying heart attack seven years ago passing. A passing. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're a fish too? I love you, Ed. You always send me wonderful stuff. You're up in Canada, right? I don't know what Dennis is talking about. This is talking about... It's okay. They'll come through and let him know. Um, so, there's something to do with... It's It's definitely... Her sleep has been interrupted. Yeah, there you go, fire signs. Come on through. We got you. Um, she's definitely... Yeah, you're Aquarius and Pisces. I'm Pisces and Aquarius. <laughs> so, we're like the same. Um, yes... Um, so anyway, hi Ken, I'm glad you joined us. Everybody say hi Ken. If anybody jumps, if anybody jumps in, say hi to him while I'm doing the reading. I don't see him. She does not sleep well and has nightmares often. Yeah, it'll just say like right here where it said, um, Ken Jeffries is watching. I didn't even get it. Where it says medium, you have to go up. You have to scroll. No, I'm watching. I... Oh, he hasn't come through yet. I'm, I'm earlier than you. Yeah, so really you'll early. see Ken Jeffries in a second. So Amy, yeah, she's having a lot of problems with um with sleeping. That's her main problem. She's very sleep deprived and she has the 3 a.m. syndrome and she's not wanting to go to sleep till like the sun comes up and then she has to do schooling so her schedule is off and her hormones are going crazy. But there's also a series of isolation and I feel that, I do actually feel like there's a biological component to her anxiety. I feel like this is biological between you, her, and there's another female in your family that has it also. Very sensitive systems. Did she have a dream about, um, this has got to be your mom or your, no, your mother's alive. Um, this has got to be, you know what? Now I'm trying to, give me just a second. Hey, Kara's only three days ahead of me. She's actually had dreams where people that have passed have come to her in dreams and she can't make sense of it. I don't feel like she's able to make sense of this at all. Um, is your, your mother's passed. Her grandmother has passed, correct? Because there's a lot of people on the other side and I feel that she's very sensitive to those passings even though she didn't really know them and that's coming through and disturbing her sleep as well. Amy said yes, but didn't look like she finished. Mom is still alive. Yeah, I felt like mom's alive, but there's this has got to be grandmother to her because there's been some people that have come to her in a dream and she doesn't know who they are. But they've came to her in her dreams. And she's doing the 3 a.m. wake-up thing where she's not wanting to go to bed. My mom is still here, she says. Yeah, but not your mom. This would be her grandmother. Her grandmother. Um... Oh, that would be her, your grandmother, yours, Amy, not, not hers, yours. It's a female. This is like what we went through in your reading when I was like trying to identify who this was. So there's definitely some other people there, but there's a female. <clears throat> Bonnie's a vampire. That's so cute. <laughs> yes. Says her daughter's dealt with a lot of that. Does your daughter sleep with a dog, Amy? Does your daughter have a pet that sleeps with her? 
Blynn. Oh, that's Bonnie Lynn Miller. Now I know who it is. I was always like Blynn. Her, yeah, it's, that's Bonnie. Okay. Bonnie says she's a vampire. Hi, Terry. I'm not a vampire. <laughs> I love you. Okay. Give me just a second. When hey. I had a reading with you, my daughter got sick with throwing up right before and a little after. Also, when she sees my Himalayan salt lamp, she feels like throwing up. Yeah, that's Ooh. what I'm saying. Grounded. Wow. She is very sensitive. Yes. Yes. Cat. Yep. Okay. So there's definitely a pet that she sleeps with. And this is like a grounding animal for her. And if she doesn't have it, she doesn't do well. But it's like the anxiety. There's a couple of factors playing into her anxiety, but... She's definitely very sensitive. I agree. That's Bonnie. That's yeah. that's men that's menace. I call him menace. <laughs> I meant to say medium Dennis. Bree. That's Bonnie Lynn Miller. No, that's Bree. Bree just came up. Oh okay. Oh, I don't see Bree yet. Here she is. <laughs> I just I just called him menace. I meant to say Dennis the menace. <laughs> no, I meant to say medium Dennis, and it just came through. Dennis the menace. I I love you. Um, yeah, the anxiety is a very real component, but it's the isolation, and plus there's been news. She's seen too many things, and it's definitely stressing her out. Um, they're showing me some sort of arts thing. Is she into art and music? Because it feels like art, like there's some kind of healing she needs to be doing. And also, you need to work with the music. Um, you need to make sure that she's not being overexposed with the phone. <laughs> My sweet Bonnie, that's so sweet. I have a salt lamp for one kid and not the other. That makes sense. Well, one, Patty's, Patty was asking about the salt lamp a while ago. Um, I use salt yeah. as a grounding. Go yeah. grab, will you grab that big that block right there to show them? We got one order. So, I use salt as a grounding exercise. That's what's wrong with her daughter? She's not grounded. Yeah, see, Marty's a grounding rod, so he would be able to know that right away. There's one under my table, too, where I do her my readings. Her daughter's not grounded. She said she tr throws up around salt rocks. So that's a lot of to do with her energy being stuck at the sacral, at the, um, not the sacral, solar plexus chakra. So if her energy is stuck there and her courage is impeded, she may not be able to ground down through her feet. And what's happening is she's throwing up rather than it going down. If she's a very high vibrational, high vibrational healer, then she will not be able to sense, which is what happened to me. We had a really dark energy in the studio one day, and could I feel it? No. And it, my manager and Marty were like, how can you sit there? You don't feel that energy beside you? And I'm like, what energy? And they're like, you don't feel that? And what did I say? No. no. I couldn't I, stand it. I don't pick up on low, low energy. I just can't pick up on it. I, I couldn't, when I was younger, I got very sick to my stomach. I got headaches. I had strange smells. I didn't feel good at all. If I go into a place where there's dark energy, I get a stomach ache and I want to throw up. The throwing up is also an anxiety response, but grounding will help. So there's in the classes that I teach um, with Empath 101 and uh, Pillars of Intuition, we talk about how to ground and protect your energy and send the energy through your feet back to Mother Earth, back to the Earth anyway, just so that can happen. Sunny, you missed my Zoom. How dare you? No, I'm just kidding. It was good. It was a free anxiety workshop. If you guys are seriously having... <laughs> Did you see that, Sabrina? Yes. <laughs> are you going to sell me some, Sabrina? Yeah, you just get anxious. Like, the stomach gets upset and you really just don't know what to do with yourself. The stomach will get anxious. Um, Chest issues. Pretty much everything. <laughs> The salt is good. So this is a salt block. I actually use this giant block because... Do you want to tell them the story of the stoner? The stoner story? Oh, good Lord. No, um, go ahead. No, come on. No, go ahead. You're, come on. She, uh, she had a reading and the girl came in and she walked in the house. Don't do that to me. She walked in the house and she told me, she said, there's something wrong. I, I can't do this out there with this girl. I'm talking slow and I feel hungry and weird. And, yeah, <laughs> she feels weird and I'm busy. And I said, she's stoned. And she said, you think so? And I said, yeah. Well, first he grabbed on to me. Yeah. And he held on to me to get rid of the feeling because he grounds it through his body, out through his feet. So it leaves me and goes through him. It doesn't harm him though. No. And so... Then once I hugged, once you hugged me for a few seconds, it went away. It passed. I passed it right through, and 
she goes, what do you think is wrong? And I said, the girl's on drugs. And she said, no, you think so? And I said, yeah. I said, go out and ask her. And she came out and asked the girl. Yeah, she had smoked right before she got here. I was like, um, I'm sorry to ask you this. Oh, my God. What a horrible <laughs> you get to look at yourself on you. They don't judge you for your looks. They judge you for your soul. So, okay. I, 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 I needed to be prettier than you. Yeah, That's you the way you <laughs> That's awful. There's something wrong if I'm prettier than you. So. <laughs> Forgive me, I was just playing. Anyway. <laughs> Sabrina says she doesn't sell anything. You just have nice skin. Oh, you're a sweetheart. You wouldn't believe this, but I don't. <laughs> the only thing I use on my face is aloe vera and coconut oil. That's it. Nothing else at all. And I use vegan. I use uh, tart makeup, which is a pure vegan, plant based, no animals, no bunnies were harmed in the making of this face. <laughs> That's about it. I use aloe vera lotion every single day, and if my skin gets dry in the summer when I have sun on it, I will use coconut oil. That's it. It's all I use. But thanks for asking. That makes me feel great. <laughs> Irene, that's funny. Stoner reminds me of my brother who passed. That's he was a funny. stoner, and I'm definitely going to remember him on 420. I have had stoners and drunks and, and everything come through. Oh. I've done readings for everything from suicides to murders to whatever. <laughs> Sunny. <laughs> what does Sunny say? Let me get down here. Hi, Ken. She's like that with her husband. When he walks in the room, her anxiety just shoots up. Now you know how I feel. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> you oh, my gosh. My, you got to be in my shoes. <laughs> oh, you guys are cute. Yes, we are sometimes. I know, right? Yeah. We're in the bubble. I am. Most <laughs> of the time. Um. So anyway, yeah, I came back in and I asked the girl. I was like, sweetie, I'm sorry, but did you did you smoke out or anything? And she's like, yeah, I got high right before I came. I was nervous. And I was like, well, I can't do the reading for you because I'm feeling what you're feeling. And so before I left the studio, what I did was I tried to put my feet on the salt blocks, but it was so strong because I was reading into her energy. And so she was stoned. It was making me feel stoned and I was getting slower and I was slouching and, and I was feeling weird. And I'm like, I got to get out of here. I can't handle this. And I said, excuse me. And I ran in the house and I'm like, I feel terrible. What's wrong with me? Something's bad wrong. And he took my hands and sniffed them like he thought I'd smoke blondes. I smelled it. Because <laughs> he wanted to know whether or not I had, what, why did you do that? Why did you smell my I hands? smelled it. Oh, you could smell pot I on could me? I could smell it. Yeah. Wow. I told you that when I did that, I could smell it on you. That's crazy. Yeah. So grounding rods often come as a compliment to any psychic or medium or empath or intuitive, whatever label you want to label it, they will come with a grounding rod if they're going to stay in this business. You can't do readings consistently and not have somebody that grounds you. It doesn't have to be a man. It can be a child. It can be a dog. It can be a person. But for Marty, he is a natural grounding rod. And the last thing I'm going to say about this is his father, father, it's your grandfather. I should have just said it like that. That sounded so like mysterious. Your father's father's father. <laughs> Your great great grandfather came from Copenhagen, Denmark to California, where we live in this valley. And his father, his great great grandfather, correct? Mm -hmm. Hans Christensen. Senior. Senior. They told him there was no crops or anything that would grow here because there was no water. And yet he bought 5,000 acres and became a successful farmer because he knew how to naturally within his spirit find water with no help. He was a natural grounding rod. He was able to use dowsing rods very, very successfully. And he knew how to find water everywhere on the property that they had in their original homestead. Well, that, that gift was handed down genetically through the ages from his great grandfather to his grandfather. No, past my grandfather. It passed his grandfather. Okay, so to you tell dad. the story. Yeah, past my grandfather to my dad. And now you remember being a little boy and and tell us what it was like to go with your dad and how people would say, Oh, don't listen to him and tell oh, us they, a little bit yeah, about they that. Did, they did they did doing it again. Um Is it on you? Mm, yeah. <laughs> They did that quite a bit, and he found... What did they actually, do? You got to tell the whole story. They would uh, they would tell him that, don't listen to this guy. There's no water there. They'd have well drillers there that couldn't find water. And my dad would go out and say, they're drilling in the wrong spot. And he'd do it with just a stick. 
Um, no metal, no nothing. Pointed stick. He'd go pull it off a tree and he'd tell him to drill right here. And the well drillers would say he's crazy. A lot of the people knew my dad and they said, drill where he told you to. And they hit water. They found water almost every time. He found water in Death Valley. And a friend Just of, his hands with nothing else. Yeah, he a, could walk right to the spot. A friend of his uh, opened a travel trailer park. And that was the only water within hundreds of miles. So, yeah. So do you feel like it's a natural gift that came to you? Oh, yeah. I didn't get it. No. Now you have a different kind, though, because yeah. you can grab somebody and pull the energy down right straight through their feet. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Tell them about the lady that came and thought she had curses and oh, everything on her. Which one? There's been a, <laughs> quite a few of them you've, <laughs> you've made me come into, and there's been a lot of energy I've had to get rid of, so. Yeah, so he's a natural grounding rod, and just like a lightning rod is, oops. And you had whoops, Christy and I out here running chills up and down our spines. So. <laughs> so, oh, sorry. So just like a real ground, so California doesn't have weather, but if you have weather where you live, you're going to know that a lightning rod attaches to your house, and when the lightning comes, it strikes it. And the lightning goes down the rod and into the earth and poof, dissipates. And it doesn't cause harm to the house or the earth, right? Right. That is a natural phenomenon. But certain people have the same ability. And I was lucky enough to attract one. Or he yes, attracted sir. me. Or I, no, I attracted him. Who was it? Oh, I think it was the other way around. I'll what? take all the credit. You attracted me? I'll okay. take all the credit for it. <laughs> but, um... And not everybody, even when you take two sticks and dowels, because I don't do it and he can't do it necessarily. Nope. But um, even though you know how to do it, it takes a lot to be able to. Because many well, driller, uh, well, well, well drillers, drillers have tried it and done it. But his father was an amazing, amazing natural dowsing rod. And it came from many generations of being sensitive to that. And so he's been able to come to the studio when I'm dealing with a client that's had a lot of negative energy or they feel they've had a curse or a familiar oh. family thing. I will always pray over them to, to release and bind that energy and cut it off. But he works and puts his hand on their shoulders and I will get by their feet and put my hands on their feet and I put them on these salt blocks. Salt is a negative, it pulls negative ions away from the body. So I take salt baths regularly and I use one of these blocks under each of my feet when I'm doing a reading for someone that has negative energy. Now, the great thing is, since I've started doing the readings online, I have half as many, no, way less than half. No, not even. Like, out of 100 readings I've done, I maybe have had, like, maybe five. Where I've had to use, like, salt or needed a bath afterward. Oh, not even that many. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe five. Maybe. When I was in the studio live, people would want to hug on me all the time. Yeah. And Marty had to pull them out of the studio and they'd be sitting in front of my house waiting for me when I got home. Like all the time. Because my studio is in front of the house. There's a sign out and people would be sitting here waiting on me all hours of the night and day. So doing it online, I'm actually really happy. I'm really grateful. I love this better. I got the salt block from Amazon. They're wonderful. And I'll tell you what else. These are good for anybody that experiences... Um, gut brain problems. So you have a brain in your gut and if you experience problems with that, then heating these in an oven and putting That's your feet on them will really, really help. It helps with arthritis. Um, it helps with fibromyalgia. It helps for grounding negative pain. It helps with anxiety. I mean, they're not a miracle cure, but salt is so special to us. We talk about it in the Bible and it's used in every, it used to be traded like gold. It was currency. Salt was currency for a very important reason. Our bodies can't live without it. And our bodies are 90%, you know, salt water, right? So, all right, you guys, this was such a fun and interesting. I think I'm going to do, so Friday nights, no, this is Friday, Monday, I'm doing it on 14 ways that spirit tries to contact you. So I hope that you'll join us. And I did want to mention that I'm hoping that Marty will come back on. Since my son was not into it and he did his service, as he said, <laughs> maybe we'll get Marty to help moderate with us and be on here again. I just as long love... As I can get a better internet connection. I like having the masculine and the feminine to share with both of you. And I love with both men and women come on the broadcast. I'm so grateful for the time I get to spend with you guys. I really enjoyed this. And I'm going to start creating the events on my Facebook. So it'll be under... Okay, so two things. First of all, I own both the Soul Palette Meditative Art Studio or the Soul Palette website, um, Facebook page. 
That is this studio that you see. But my, my actual business page is Psychic Medium Sunshine Frost. You need to go over there and like those pages so you can see the events. Because the events don't show up under my personal. They show up under my business page. So Psychic Medium Sunshine Frost. What time Monday? Monday, I do them at 7.30. And I'm going to be doing the anxiety workshop again on Zoom Monday at 10 a.m. It's a free class. Free. Free, 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 free. Free, free, free. Free, free, free? Free, free. Free? Free, free. Okay. And what time was that? Free, free, free. What time? Free, free. Seven, no. 7.30. 7.30 is going to be the 14 ways spirit tries to contact you. And 10 a.m. is the... Didn't hear a word of it. That's how men are. You hear that? He was talking, so he wasn't listening. I was free freeing. He was free freeing. Okay, so Monday, I did a terrible job at Zoom. I need a technical director to stand. If my spirit could come stand over my shoulder and tell me how to use Zoom, then I would be really successful at it. But I didn't, so it's okay. I got it figured out now. I think I know the problem was I created two events at the same time, and then I was in one, and it signed everybody out of the other. So you want to go to it, and it's under... I'm going to try to send a link, but I'm going to post the ID for the class, and there is no password, and yes, it is free. It's by donation only, so please donate if you feel that it's helped you. I don't feel that people with anxiety and um, panic attacks need to be taken advantage of by some a super expensive online course when God tells us to teach from the perspective of love and compassion. So I teach on three principles. Do you remember what they are? Feeling. Fact, faith. So our anxiety and, and uh, classes are feelings, what we feel, the fact of what it really is, and faith that we can get through it. So we're going to go with those three principles, and we'll be teaching at 10 o'clock on Monday morning, and it's called the Sunnyside Anxiety Workshop. Sound good? Sounds good. Angel Hour is going to be Monday, Wednesday, Friday at 7.30. And Sandy, the the... Zoom was, it's new, so All the try, classes. try again uh, Monday and see if you can log in. She's new to the whole Zoom thing, so she's getting the kinks worked out of it. I am the kink. The Zoom knows how to work. I'm the kink. Yeah. <laughs> you have to have a separate ID number. Yes, I'm going to try to put that in there. I didn't know if I just wanted to list it by the name or if I should do it by the ID. If I should do it by the ID, then I'll list that in there. Um, in fact, yes, you know what? Irene says yes. I tried to go. <laughs> can't do that when you're live, sunshine. Can't go out of there and look at another page. I will post that on my personal page and on both pages. I will do it. Yes, it ends after 45 minutes. Yes. Feeling. Fact uh, and faith. Yes. Fear, fear her, Rhonda. For her. <laughs> Leave her alone. She's a tired cappy. Bless her heart. <laughs> Um, so I we are being forced into technology. It's okay, sweetie. Technology can be used for the best, best things. Even if it wasn't the original intent, it's going to be a good thing. So you guys remember, I will see you again on Monday and I'll have a schedule of classes coming up. We're going to be teaching the classes on Zoom. I also have angel group readings. So if you have a group of people, say there's two of you and you want to receive a reading at the same time. I'm dropping the price down to 60 per person. So you will split a half an hour and you will be both live, but one will be muted while I'm doing the reading for one and then the other. This works, works especially well with family groupings or where you have similar, mel well, I can't talk tonight, similar relatives, but it can work for any group, roommates, husband and wife, whatever it may be. So we're going to do angel group readings. And that changes the cost. So it'd be 60 for two people, 40 for three, and what was it? Was it 50 for three? I don't know. I'll post it though. My manager and I came up with it for group readings. Let's see. Now I want to do the math on it. I'm trying Bre to figure it out. Bonnie was asking uh, about Zoom. Where is Zoom? And yes, Bonnie, it's an app like Bree said. Yes, it's an app. Yes, it is. It's Zoom. You have to download the app on your computer or your phone. And then what you'll do is you'll just go into the, the meeting at that time or you can ask for the link and click on the link and it'll take you right to the meeting and I'll let you right in. Okay. And Irene says she can't wait for the empath classes. 
They're really good. I taught them here. They're so much fun. You get so much information out of it. And I'm going to be teaching on crystals of the Bible as well as spiritual properties of crystals. Yes, that's what I mean, Stephanie. I didn't, you're the main reason I do these group readings now. I haven't done one yet, but I will be doing them. And you are the main reason. You're the main reason, girl. You've done amazing. She's referred me to so many family members. We've done so many readings with her. And I'm super impressed with her. I always, always am. For Terry and her. And her yes. <laughs> All right. So you can ask about the angel group reading with my manager. But it is split up to four people. I can't do more than four people at this time. Because I, whereas a couple of my constituents do readings where each person pays, what was it, $80 a person? <clears throat> yes. 60 or $80. But you doesn't guarantee you a reading. Doesn't guarantee you may or may not get a reading. There's like 20 people in the reading. May not is the key word. May not is the key word. I try to make sure that each person gets 15 minutes during the reading. So if it's you and one other person, you'll get a half an hour. If it's four people, they each get 15 minutes. So we want to make it even, okay? If it's three people, we'll split that up to uh, whatever it may be, 20 minutes a piece. So that's how we're going to do the group reading. So people are down on their luck. They're down on their time. And they don't have a lot of money. Readings are wonderful. And if you want one, this is a great way to do it. So the angel group reading, what you would do to, to book that is you'd go on to the Psychic Medium Sunshine Frost. That will go straight to my manager, not to me. And she will schedule that reading for you. You can always send an app, um, an appointment, an appointment request, but your appointment is not confirmed until payment. And I usually take uh, Venmo or Zelle. And I'm about to start using Cash App because I'm not really that savvy with it. So I just want people all over the country and all over to be able to connect to their loved ones. And I'm not the only reader out there. But if you're drawn to this energy, I hope that you enjoy this broadcast. And I do want to let you know that your loved ones are at peace. I'm also going to be offering the Oracle again, which I haven't done the Oracle readings in a while. An Oracle is a very detailed reading. <clears throat> it costs a little bit more, but it talks about past, present, and future. And sometimes, almost always, people come through from the other side. So that would be life chat, life, man, tongue tied. That would be life path, soul path, which is what you've been through, or the Akashic Records. And it also would be people coming through from the other side. So Oracle readings are more detailed. So how do you do that when other people come in when you're doing your reading? They don't come in. So it would be like this. Four of you would sign. We'd sign all in at the same time. I would do a prayer to start the reading. And then I would pick the first person that comes through. And the rest of you would be muted. You'd, you would mute your own microphone. I'm not going to make you be muted. You would mute your own microphone while, let's say, let's say you and Irene and Marty is there. Um, will it mix up the ones who are there for the ones you are doing the reading? Yeah, possibly. Uh, it's not about who comes through on this side. It's whoever comes through on the other side more strongly will get the first reading. And then I'll ask them to move over and allow other people to come through. <clears throat> it's not the easiest thing, but Stephanie... You've done a reading with people on Skype. We were both there, but you were in a different place. Do you remember that? And how did that reading go? I've done readings with Stephanie where she was present for two or three other people. Sunny, you had one where your mom was present. Um, your friend had her husband present. And his grandfather came through. She was up in New Jersey. So it does happen. Do you do past life readings? They come through in the Oracle. So the Oracle reading is what you want if you're looking for past, present, and future. It's a more detailed it's a little more expensive. It's $120, but it's a little more detailed. It, it tells past, present. So I meditate for about 10 minutes before I do the reading, and that lets me into the Akashic. So I'm able to pick up a lot more than just an angel reading where people it are coming also through. It drains you a lot more. It what? It drains, it drains me a lot more. Yes. So, yes. So Oracle readings, yep, they'll be on the website. I'm sorry, no, I, I keep saying website. I am putting together the Seer of Light website. But right now we just go through Facebook. Facebook, Facebook, Facebook. All right, we got all this out, right? Yep, we're all good. Angel group readings, Oracle readings, classes. This weekend? Nothing this weekend. I know, I'm booking readings. If you guys want a reading, you can still book one. I work... From 10 a.m. to 9 p.m. And all you got to do is send a message through. And I'm also going to be doing <laughs> angel bingo. <laughs> I 
<laughs> Next week, we're going to be giving away a free angel, a um, meet your angel reading, which is a really not a very long reading, but it gives you the name of your guardian angel so that you can call on them. And it also lets you know who they are. So that's a really special type of reading. And what we're going to be doing is angel bingo. So since you guys don't have bingo cards, we're going to be... I have a grid and I'm going to be asking questions and if you meet all three criteria, you get to put an X on there. So I'll put your name on there and if you get three names in a row, angels will let me know that you're the one they want to give the reading to. Irene's asking about the painting. Yes, Saturday painting is Sunday, good. So. Painting is good, but it takes me a week to prepare. So I'm not prepared to do it you this were, week. You were asking. Oh, oh okay. Saturday and Sunday. Yeah. Okay. She said Saturday and Sunday is good. So it must be either day is good for her. Like this, the angel bingo will go like this. Is your birthday in March? Do you have a son? Do you have only, you know, do you have a boy that's 20 or whatever? Is your mom passed? You have to meet all the criteria without telling a story. No storytelling up in here to win the angel readings. And angels know the answer. So they give me the question so that you guys can come through. And then it'll say, bing, 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 bing. Marty will probably control the board. I'll be asking the questions. You guys will be answering. So we're going to do with some angel bingo. Won't that be so much fun? Mm -hmm. <laughs> He's like, okay, whatever. All right, you guys. Well, this has been a, such a fun Friday night. I love it. Let's do the painting. Let's do an event. I'll post it on the uh, Psychic Medium Sunshine Frost. Please go on there and like, because that's going to be really the page that I'm going to be most... Uh, relevant that's where all the relevant contact and calendars will be okay hi lisa lisa want a free reading with me how was it lisa lisa's like come on i'm here i don't see lisa that's because my feed is ahead of yours oh lot da no, i'm just kidding lot da lot da sunshine you think you think all that huh okay Bonnie is the last comment I see. Miss Bonnie, no, because Irene, Miss Israel commented, Miss Bonnie. No. <laughs> Miss Israel, Irene, you mean? I love her. No, her name is Miss Israel. I love her. How fun. Susan had a reading and I loved it and I said her name right and she liked that and her beautiful father came through. Susan Marie Sternquist Johnson. You know what? She had, Terry wants an oracle. Are you doing it this weekend? Yes. I work every weekend except on Sundays because I always go to church. But since I don't go to church, I still donate two to three hours of our time to do scripture study and we do sacrament. So we do it from home. So I don't do any readings on Sunday from 9 a.m. up till 1. I keep 9 to 12 as family and church time at home as well. So keep your box. Yeah, keep your cereal boxes for painting and your children can do this with you. There's no age limit on any of this. You can use an Amazon box. You can use a cereal box. You can use absolutely any of that. And what you want to do is to go get a frame from the dollar store or an old frame, whatever size it is. <laughs> Lucy said, keep your cereal boxes. No, that's it. That's I'm serious. That's what you want to do. Nope. Cereal boxes work perfectly. So you just get an old frame. And what you would do is you take the glass out of the frame and the thickness of the cardboard is usually the same as the glass with the backing. So you'll have a framed painting. So you just put the frame over the cardboard and make your lines, cut that out, and you're ready to go. All Bree has to do is sign up for it. Yes, That's sweetie, it. just go on. So please go to, can you, oh, I can't type. I guess I can type in psychic medium, sunshine oh, frost. I can't type anything. Mine's locked. Nobody can spell psychic. I'll help you because we always say physic. <laughs> physic medium. How do I type? I don't even know how to type in my own thing. Okay, here we go. Mine's not typing. Psychic. Look at this. I'm having to spell out my own name. I'm like sounding it out like a blonde. Psychic medium, sunshiny frost. Here we are. Wow, I just saw my own link. That's pretty neat. Stephanie said she'll book it. Hi, Gabby. Psychic medium sunshine frost and in preparing for, I know, thank you, Bonnie. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna go up and visit them when this is said and done. I already promised I'm gonna come visit. Hug, I'm gonna hug your neck. That's what we say in the style. I'm gonna come hug your neck, honey. Thank you, Amy. Amy's amazing and she has a video that is getting ready to bust at the seams I cried when I saw her video. Mm -hmm. Tell her what happened. You cried. You I was in the kitchen bawling like, oh my God, they're talking about me. I'm not anything. How can they think that? That's amazing. God is wonderful. God is everything there is. Don't ever take the credit for this. God is in control of these gifts. He gives us what we get. And I'm always pr proud and grateful. 
All right, you guys, well, we're gonna wrap up tonight. My husband's doing the fingers like it's time to go. Let's end this with a prayer. Yeah? Come on, Marty. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> Father God, we're so grateful for your mystic and divine presence. Lord, we ask that you be with us and bless us. Help us to have a wonderful weekend in this new reality. Help us to plant the seeds of love and self-sufficiency. Help them to grow and help us to grow in our gifts as well as comfort our families. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, you guys. We'll have a wonderful day and I'll see you Monday morning. Bye-bye.